Hafidids and Manana Sidzus, good morning. The Committee on Municipal Affairs, Tourism, Housing, and Historic Preservation uh, will be called to order. It's about 8.07 this morning. Uh, the, on the agenda, ladies and gentlemen, is the appointment of Mr. Milton Moronaga, member to the Guam Visitors Bureau's Board of Directors. The, the second item on the agenda is Bill Number 398-33-COR, an act to appropriate funds from the fiscal year 2016 fund balance of the Tourist Attraction Fund to the Guam Visitors Bureau for the Hurao Academy Chamorro Language Immersion Preschool Program, and also Bill Number 399-33, an act to appropriate funds from fiscal year 2016 fund balance Tourist Attraction Fund to the Guam Visitors Bureau for a family and for the printing, purchasing, and distribution of Chamorro literature for the children. I will note for the record um, uh, that there will be an amendment to the title on Bill 399-33-COR to uh, correct the name of the program uh, which the funding source will go into. Uh, at this time, I note for the record that um, in accordance to 5 GCA Chapter 8, Subsection 8107, notices were sent via email to all senators and all main media broadcasting outlets, and uh, notices were sent via email to all senators and all media outlets on December 6, which adheres to the five-day notice, and the second notice was on December 9, which adheres to the 48-hour notice. If there are any written to testimonies that want to be submitted uh, to the listening audience, you have uh, you can do so by um, sending it to the office of Senator Tina Munya Barnes at 155 Hester Place, Haganya Guam 96910, or do it the old fashioned way by submitting a fax to 472 3400 or email at senator uh, at Tina Munya Barnes dot com. Uh, if there are any other increase or questions that the listening audience may have, they could call our office at 472 3455 or 56. Uh, and they can uh, speak to the committee um, staff uh, in our office. So, uh, at this time, the first up on the agenda is the appointment of Mr. Milton Morinaga, members, member to the Guam Visitors Bureau's Board of Directors. We do have a sign-in sheet. Uh, if those that are sitting here would like to, uh, in the audience, would like to testify on his behalf, you're more than welcome to do so. Or you could just write your name if you're in support or not in support of uh, Mr. Morinaga's um, appointment. Okay? And we'd like to wish everybody who's listening, as we are in the holiday spirit and the blessings of Christmas, We'd like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Uh, before Mr. Moranaga gets uh, to speak, I'm going to ask that those who came to testify for him speak first, and then you can present your, your testimony. Okay? And uh, also, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank my good colleague uh, who's here with me, Senator Tom Hatta. Manana Sijos, thank you for coming. Um, I will go ahead and start with Mr. Uh, Oscar Miyashita. I would like to ask uh, all of you gentlemen to please state your name for the record, where you're from, and if you support the appointment or not. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Senator Tom Lara, good morning. I do have a written ser uh, testimony. My name is Oscar Miyashita. I do have a written testimony, so if I may, to ensure that I, I cover everything uh, that I would like to say, uh, if I may just go ahead and read that. Good morning, Madam Chair, Tina Muni Barnes, and Senator Ara. My name is Oscar Miyashita. I'm here this morning to extend my wholehearted support for the appointment of Mr. Milton Morinaga to the board of GBB. I have had the privilege of working closely with Mr. Morinaga while I was on the board of GBB from 2012 to 2015. During my tenure at the GBB, I was a treasurer and head of the Korea Market Committee. Milton has been the co-chair of the Japan Market Committee at GBB. He has demonstrated his leadership skills during the same period 
by often voicing his opinions during the broad board meetings, not afraid to challenge or ask poignant questions to the board, executive committee members, other members of the board, and management of GBB on various important aspects of GBB. And he has always advocated for the need for GBB to work closely in a collaborative fashion with other government Guam agencies such as GIA and GIDA. Also, he's a type of individual who is able to maintain objectivity, impartiality, while making critical decisions, and always Guam, uh, place Guam's tourism as the number one priority in supporting the agenda of GBB, rather than focusing on his employer's interest. I'm particularly impressed by his crisis management ability, which he had demonstrated following the tragedy that occurred a few years ago involving a knife-wielding lunatic who killed and injured many innocent Japanese tourists in Tumon. I clearly remember his leadership in managing the reputational damages to Guam during the, this tragic episode by working closely and timely with the family members of the victims, the affected tour agents, and dealing effectively with the Japanese media. I also recall him leading the Guam delegation in attending the funeral service of the two individuals who were killed by the lunatic uh, perpetrator, although such events were painful and stressful for him, for him and other attendees. I also recall uh, Chairwoman Tina William Barnes. I think she, you also graciously attended those funerals. This type of altruistic and proactive steps taken by him clearly demonstrate his dedication commitment, and exemplary ability to lead Guam's number one industry. And I'm aware of his initiative to increase the airline seats coming out of Japan to Guam in an effort to boost the number of Japanese tourists, particularly from Haneda Airport. Although securing an airline to fly from Haneda to Guam is a huge challenge due to limited international flight, uh, flight spots slots available from Haneda, I strongly believe that he will be successful in adding more airline seats from Japan to Guam in due course. And I'm confident that he will continue to help increase the market share of other important destinations such as Korea, China, Taiwan, and Hong Kong in, in an effort to market Guam and maintain the reputation of Guam as a family-oriented, clean destination close to various Asian countries while promoting the local goods and services which will benefit the people of Guam. Further, he is able to work effectively with the management of GBB as well as various key stakeholders of GBB including tour agents, other government agencies, mayor's council, and all finance tourism related firms and organizations. Accordingly, I hereby offer my full and unequivocal support for the appointment of Mr. Milton Marinara to the GBB board. Thank you for providing me with the opportunity to express my viewpoints. Jesus Masi. Masi, Mr. Marinaga, for your testimony. Uh, next on the agenda, I will have Mr. Joe Blas. The Honorable Chair of Person, Tina Munya Mars, Senator Ada. Manana Sijus, Buenas and Saludo. I am Joe Blas, the Chairman of the Board for the Guam Hotel and Restaurant Association. I have known Mr. Marinaga for over 10 years and personally for seven years. I'm here in support of Mr. Marinaga's confirmation to the appointed member of the Guam Visitors Bureau. The many years that I have known Mr. Marinaga, I know him to be a front runner in the tourism community. His vision in destination management, hospitality service standard, economic climate, the conservation of our island culture 
and natural resources proves that he is capable to move one forward in the blueprint for tourism. Mr. Morado will definitely influence public and private partnership in market research, market regulations, market planning, and a whole playful of economic development that matters to us here in Guam. He is a strategic plan driver in terms of education and training, safety, and security. He has a keen eye that can balance the needs of our visitors and the needs of our people of Guam. His appointment to the Guam Visitors Bureau will be an asset and will be greatly benefit Guam's visitor industry and people of Guam. Even though he's from Hawaii and talks the kind, he is more Guamanian than most. He is never po asso when it comes to loving our island. And besides that, he rides a Harley Davidson. Sign him on. How good must Mr. Bus run for Mr. Pierce Good morning, Senator Barnes and uh, Senator Ada. Um, my name is Peter Scro. I'm from uh, the village of Timoning, and I'm here in support of uh, the appointment of um, uh, Milton. Um, I, I want to say that I'm here actually wearing two hats. I'm, I'm here personally, but I'm also here uh, as chairman of the Governor's Council of Economic Advisors. Um, a lot of people don't know who the Council of Economic Advisors are. Um, it was created by... Um, um, the governor about, um, oh, it's been about six years now by executive order. Uh, it's basically uh, individuals in the community that are recognized to know uh, things about Guam's economy. And um, we, uh, I wanted to, to say that we kind of shaped the form of it uh, about six months ago. And I, I have to say that one of the things that drove me to do it as chairman uh, is my vice chairman uh, Milton, so we've had a chance to, to serve together. Um, one of the things with, with the council is that we, we don't interfere with things that happen with, with Gita, but they're definitely made of people that have direct contacts with, with investors or with um, um, a variety of people that are not just with, within the tourism industry but outside the tourism industry. Um, Many people may not have read, but Japan Airlines, for instance, does have training programs uh, that are occurring here on Guam. Um, I know that um, just because he'd, he'd be too proud to say it, but that we owe it to Milton that that's happening. Um, those were the types of results that we wanted to achieve. And in that case, it, it, it didn't take a whole committee to get uh, quite, a bit, quite a bit done for that. Um, with respect to tourism, um, I, I think that you only have to read uh, Milton's resume. Uh, it's amazing what he's done, not just in Guam, but uh, Honolulu and, and, and the CNMI. Um, and, and when looking at the Guam Visitors Bureau, which I, I served some time ago, um, I couldn't think of uh, someone that uh, has such a, a good resume uh, to, to be qualified to serve on, on the Guam Visitors Bureau Board. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Scroll. I want to go ahead and before I have Mil Mr. Moronaga speak, I acknowledge the presence of Mr. Uh, Nate tonight, the CEO and President of Guam Visitors Bureau. Would you like to say something, uh, Mr. Tonight? Would you like to say something? And um, I also have Miss Mary Rhodes who. Um, before we give the mic to Mr. Tonight, I do know that there are several people who also uh, signed in just to support. Alvin Chang, uh, Mr. Kuro Kuroshi, and Mr. Maneda. Thank you. Mr. Tonight? Half a day, I'm Nathan Tonight, uh, President and CEO of the Guam Visitors Bureau. And I'd like to read my testimony in favor of uh, Mr. Morinaga, Hafadeh Chairwoman Barnes, 
uh, Senator Adda, and all the members of the Committee on Municipal Affairs, Tourism, Housing, and Guam Preservation Trust. To do Smasi for allowing me to submit testimony in support of the appointment of Milton Morinaga to the Guam Visitors Bureau Board of Directors. <coughs> Morinaga san has dedicated his life to the responsible development of tourism throughout the Pacific, especially here on Guam. He was instrumental in moving the construction of the Tsubaki Tower, which will add 340 hotel rooms to the industry's inventory and create an additional 300 jobs for our local people. Throughout his leadership, Ken Corporation has invested millions into this community that goes to giving our families of Guam a better way of life. Mornagasan has been part of the GB board as a membership elected director for the last several years. As chairman of the Japan Marketing Committee, he has played a pivotal role uh, in GB's efforts to uh, stem the decline of, from the top source market by implementing a new strategy that focuses on diversifying the market profile. Morinaga-san continues to be an asset to GBB, and we humbly ask for your support in confirming him as part of the board. Sijus Masi, and thank you again for this opportunity to support Morinaga-san's appointment. Thank you. Sijus Masi, Mr. Mrs. Rose. One is and a half a day. Good morning, Chairwoman, Honorable Chairwoman Tina Melania Barnes and Senator Ada. Thank you for having us here today. As the president of the Guam Hotel Restaurant Association, I'd like to express my full support of Mr. Milton Morinaga's nomination to serve on the board, board of directors for the Guam Visitors Bureau. Mr. No Morinaga has already served three years on the GBB board of directors and currently sits as the chairman of the Japan Marketing Committee. Overall, Mr. Morinaga has more than 40 years of experience in the tourism industry managing hotel resorts and developing new properties in key destinations such as Hawaii, Saipan, and Guam. While in Hawaii, Mr. Marinaga held several leadership roles in general management, business development, operations, and government community relations. The success in Hawaii led Mr. Marinaga to new markets such as Saipan and Guam. Of the 40 plus years, seven years alone were spent in Saipan with a Hyatt Regency hotel, and a total of 12 years together with the Hyatt Regency Guam and PHR Ken Micronesia in Guam. During his 12 years in Guam, I've had the distinct honor of working alongside with Mr. Maranaga on many industry initiatives, including key items from the Tourism 2020 Plan with GBB. For example, GHRA has worked closely with hoteliers and GBB to help improve quality and yield by providing training and improving service throughout the island for workforce development programs. Also, GHRA works closely with hoteliers and GBB on destination management issues, such as upgrading facilities and improving Guam's image through important beautification and safety and security programs. Mr. Morinaga has distinguished himself from others over the years in different capacities in the industry, as not only a hotelier, as an owner's rep, but also as a managing, managing director of PHR Ken Micronesia. Through his varying roles, I have worked and continue to work closely with Mr. Morinaga on important issues that advocate just legislation and government regulations that affect the tourism industry. For these reasons, and he's a very good friend of mine, and I think that he's a great person for this island and has done well by GBB through his years. I strongly support Mr. Morinaga on his nomination and hopeful appointment to the Guam Visitors Bureau's Board of Directors. Sinceramente, Mary. At this time, I ask Mr. Morinaga to please present his testimony. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Half a day. Good morning, Chairwoman Tina Munir Barnes and Senator Tamara, and distinguished members of the committee. Thank you for this opportunity to appear before you today. It is a privilege for me, and I'm honored to appear before you in this chamber among dedicated public servants. I want to thank you for your time this morning, and Governor Eddie Calvo for the trust he has placed in me by nominating me to serve on Guam Business Bureau Board of Directors. I am also thankful to be joined by my friends as well as business associates who showed their support for me by being here today. My career in tourism industry dates back in 1974 when I started my first job in acting general manager at the small hotel in Honolulu. From there, I started a 40 plus year career in tourism and hotel business. In 1979, I moved to a managerial position with one of the large U.S. hotels changed, the High Regency Waikiki in Hawaii. 
Therefore, I spent seven years in Hyatt Regency Hotel in Saipan. In 1990, I moved to Big Island of Hawaii and was directly involved in development and execution plans of development of a luxury hotel, including two golf courses. My managerial position also, they are also involved negotiating with various government agencies to secure government approval for the development as well as developing community outreach program to obtain public support for the proposed development. After seeing the project to successful completion, I relocated to Guam in 2004 as an owner's representative of Guam until 2007 when the hotel was sold. I then took a managing director position with PHR Camp Micronesia, which I still currently hold. My direct involvement with the Guam Business Bureau began in 2013 as an elected board of directors and presently I'm the chairman of the Japan Marketing Committee. GBB has led the tourism industry to new heights, with our rival continue to break records. The fiscal year, we surpassed 1.5 million visitors, more than 100,000 more than fiscal year 15, which also was also an, an all record. Hotel capacity taxes nearly doubled in the last five years. The tourism generated $245 million in taxes for Guam, government of Guam last year. More than 20,000 jobs are sustained by visitors, or one in every three jobs in island. That's why our motto in GBB is making Guam a better place to live, work, and visit. However, the tourism industry is quickly changing, and we are facing some challenges. Ten years ago, Japan used to be 80% of arrivals, but today represent only 50%. There are several reasons for decline, and as the chairman of the Japan Marketing Committee, I have worked with GBB management to update the way we do business in Japan. We have implemented a new cooperative marketing program, incentivized their airlines to add more flights. We hired a new Japan market, uh, Japan manager, and we align our operations to support our stakeholders better. Lastly, this year, we are focusing on online and social media channels to drive business and promote all wonderful things we can do only on Guam. Our goal in addition to continue the growth in our other markets including Korea and China and Hong Kong is to stop the Japan market negative arrivals trend this year. And I feel by next year we will once again see growth in our Japan market. I believe that my substantial experience in tourism industry and especially the hotel industry provides me with skill set necessary to help lead the Guam Business Bureau. We have made substantial progress in promoting and developing tourism industry in Guam, but there is still work to be done. And I am committed and confident that I can carry on the mission of Guam Business Bureau. Thank you. Jesus Masi and your support, and I have confirmed, I look forward to working closely with you. Thank you. You're very welcome. Senator, Senator Tom, have any remarks? Thank you. Um, good morning, Mr. Marinaga. I, of course, I've known you for a long time, and yes. you still have black hair, like I did. Uh, it goes a long way back. I still have hair. First of all, I, I noticed that the, uh, I guess the chairmanship of GBB has been vacated, is that correct? Uh, yes. Yeah. That's what I'm are, are you in line for that? I wish I could be a chairman. I'll be, uh, I wish I would like to be a chairman, of course. Okay. Good. Um, the, other, the, other, the other question that I have is, I know that GBB spends quite a bit of time and effort in basically going to the point of origin of the tourists uh, to send them over our way. Uh, and then, of course, once they get here, uh, they do whatever it is that tourists do. But do you do you feel that that enough funds from the tourist attraction fund is being uh, invested uh, for destination management? Um, I, I, I realize that there's funds that are given to the municipalities, you know, to clean, cut up the grass and all that. But within Tumon itself, uh, and I ask that question based on the fact that maybe what 50% of the street lights there don't work. Um, you know, I, there's, there's certainly a lot of, I think, safety issues down there, crosswalks and, and whatnot, sidewalks that are kind of falling apart. Um, 
And so maybe if you can just kind of comment on that, and do you, do you think that enough is being invested in Tulane? Thank you very much. You're exactly correct. Um, the, the TAF funds are not enough to maintain what we need to maintain Tulane. Okay, not think is enough. Okay, well, the biggest problem is that we do make corrections or fix things, but the biggest issue is we don't maintain. We don't enforce what we fix. So biggest issue is like the road in Tumon. We fix it up, the Guam Public Works fix the road nicely and everything, but the developer or the contractor next day dig a hole, put their infrastructure and fill it up, and that's it. And nobody's monitoring that to make sure it's done properly. So within six to one year, you have another pothole. And who is enforcing that? We need to enforce these people, developer and contractor, to be responsible that our tax money is spent to make it nice for the tourists to come. Tourism is the biggest asset for us. And when the business industry is success, then we have more employment. But the thing is, people come here to expect to see a nice ocean, nice beach, nice um, uh, tumon. But the biggest thing is, Others, that we, I'm not looking at the short-term fixes. I'm looking at long-term fixes. You know, we tend to look at short-term and ignore what consequence we're going to see at a later date. Like, for instance, the flooding. The initial study was to dump all the water into the ocean. Did anybody really study that? That ocean is our resource. We cannot ignore that. Immediately, we might fix that storm drain issue, but we're not going to, we have to see the concept of what will happen to the ocean. So now we, uh, Gita, went back and trying to look at the issue again to make sure that we do not destroy our natural resources. And that's my biggest thing is that we tend to do a short term fixes and not a long term. And we don't, even though if it's a short term, then we need to maintain and monitor those fixes. And a good example is the street lights. We fix it. Next day it burns out, but we are working hard, GBB is working hard to make sure it's a permanent fixes. And that's our my goal is to do permanent fix and not a quick fixes. And that will maintain for the tourists to come back and see that nothing has been uh, destroyed after we do the short term fixes. Well, thank, thank you very much for your response and, and that certainly gives me a lot of um, uh, encouragement that, you know, you, you will I mean, your, your forward-looking um, perspective on things. And, uh, and of course, I've, I've, I've known you for a long time. I've, I've, I have full faith and confidence in, in your appointment that you will serve well on GBB. So um, I'll tell you right now, I, I, you will have my support. Thank, Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Senator Adams, Senator Mr. Moraga, I want to share with you that uh, we've worked together for at least for the last six, seven years, and uh, I want to say that your professionalism and your expertise in the arena is um, has been excellent and amazing. I want to say that our working collaboration together, uh, based on the uh, uh, tragic incident that happened um, several years ago, um, with the quit quick thinking and the collaboration with our stakeholders and many of you that are in this room today, uh, it was um, with at least the compassion and the vision that we work closely with those families and with the Japanese community that uh, literally um, saved Guam from, from a lot of negative publicity and it took a lot of um, I think um, just being able to, uh, in our language, we would say fatal to the family and give respect to the family and extend the condolences from the island of Guam. And it was because of your uh, complete interaction working with our island uh, community and, and the stakeholders, but also working with the community back in Japan that we were able to at least uh, uh, bring some peace and and know that that when things happen happen that are tragic, we have to come together as a family and and that really gave me a, a very powerful um, impression 
of how you can work closely with with others, uh, especially with the community. I, I want to share uh, to the public that um, uh, the community involvement that you've engaged your uh, self with, uh, not just with your Harley group, but working closely with Geff Pago, the Regalo Foundation, the Habitat for Humanity, working with the Department of Agriculture, the Food to Farm to Table uh, programs. Uh, I want to say that those are very admirable, and uh, you continue to integrate closely uh, uh, with the village residents, and uh, that's something that that we need to continue to see is we have to have board of directors that are willing to not just work on the marketing aspect but to remember that when we market guam we have to make sure that in guam that we're ready ourselves and as as guam visitors bureau has stepped up to the plate to help with the with the beautification and the maintenance of our island and making sure that our product is safe we've also got to remember about taking care of our own local programs and making sure that what we need to do to promote, perpetuate, advocate, and, and really uh, um, share Guam to the rest of the world, that those things and that those programs need to be included. And as I see a lot of folks in the, in, uh, in the audience today that are here to, to talk about the two other bills, I want to say that it's important that the collaboration be there. You know, sometimes we have to give resources in order to get back. But we should never forget about the identity and the advocation and the promotion of who we are as island people. Our Chamorro people, our Chamorro history, our 4,000 year old history that needs to be preserved. Because if we don't do it, nobody else will. And I know that with your uh, heart and soul in the tourist industry, and working closely with the stakeholders here, with the Hotel and Restaurant Association, with the private community, with the, with the private sector, but more importantly, with with just the village residents. I know that you had close working relationships with uh, several of the mayors in the villages to make sure that we bring the programs out that we have. I want to say that this is going to be a good thing. Uh, I do want to say that uh, uh, um, I'm going to expeditiously do the report because I think it's important that we feel that they can see that's been vacated for several months now. But um, my one question to you would be, if there is anything that you could make a change today based on the programs that Guam Visitors Bureau has, or anything that you can do to enhance what GBB has, is there any ideas that you could put to the table? Yes. One thing that I would like to see and emphasize is that uh, I want to see a balanced uh, residence needs and the uh, visit industry, meaning like exactly what you said, uh, without the locals, the residents, the village, we cannot sell Guam. They are the resource. They are the asset of Guam. And with their help, we can sell Guam. And so one of the things I would like to see is more like a village competition where they will have their own resource to sell goods or to sell their village um, uh, something uniqueness or whatever and let the popularity vote choose which village will be the best. And of course the help of KIDA and GBB will fund their whatever development they have. So that makes their economic uh, sustainability or research what they can sell. That means you're going to have more buy Guam product like their vegetables, food, or whatever. So they need to be proud of their village and I'm proud of uh, working with a lot of the uh, mayor council like Mayor Hoffman and, and, and see what we can do to enhance that type of enjoyment. And when the tourists come, I would like to see the tourists to go out of Tumon, go to South, outside of the box and see the entire Guam. And to do that, of course, the GBB, GIDAN, and all the government agency will hand, um, give help to them to make sure that they will be successful. And they think that, that way they take, can take proud of themselves. And I think it's important that the residents will be work with us too at the same time. Mr. Moranaga, 
With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, um, if nobody in the audience would like to testify on behalf, Mr. Polino, please, please have a seat. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Hafele Aguahusi Bill Paulino. I'm currently the school principal for St. Francis School. And with that note, I, you know, I just couldn't help but come up here and testify. I know that for the last 26 years with the St. Francis School, we have been having actually from 10 to 20 students from Japan and currently we're also arranging where students come up here from Korea and so I know the last two years we had something like in the neighborhood of more than 50 Korean students that we actually uh, you know had at school that were there just to interact with our students and so each year one of the things that I know that the board of you know for TVB would always support our activities. We would meet with them and they welcome the students from Japan and they would also even pro provide some gifts. One of the things that I saw over the last 20 some years of this program with St. Francis School and that is these families in which we made, you know, friends, they have become part of our family uh, for St. Francis School. Even the adults, like for instance, just uh, last year, we house, or rather we house in, in, you know, in my home, several Japanese who became just like brothers and sisters to us. And so what GVB is doing and with this gentleman right here, and I have that confidence that he's going to go out, I'm from the South, sir, and I know that there are so many things out there in the, in the Southern area that you know we can put together, help each other, not just Gefbago. In fact, I fathered uh, you know the Gefbago concept in, in the lawn with uh, Judy Flores. And one of the things that I know of is there are many things in which we can attract these tourists to come to the island. This gentleman stated that it is you know an asset. The tourist industry is something that we need to continue to work on. And so I really ask that you uh, give your support to TVB and ensure that it's not just a bad ink fix that we see up there, you know, like what the gentleman stated, that it's fixed today and there's no enforcement. But then in order for that enforcement uh, you know, to occur, it needs also some funding. So, I, sir, I really support your idea. And thank you for giving me this opportunity. Mr. Okay, thank you. Uh, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we will call the appointment of Mr. Milton Moranaga to the uh, Board of Directors for the Guam Visitors Bureau, publicly heard. Uh, uh, thank you so very much for those who came in attendance to support Mr. Moranaga's confirmation. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, next on the agenda is Bill Number. Ladies and gentlemen, up on the agenda next is Bill Number 398-33-COR, as introduced by myself, Senator Tina Rose Munoz Barnes, which is an act to appropriate funds from fiscal year 2016 fund balance of the Tourist Attraction Fund to the Guam Visitors Bureau for the Hurao Academy's Chamorro Language Immersion Preschool Program. Uh, I do know that there are a lot of folks uh, from the Hural Academy that are here to testify uh, uh, on this bill. And at this time, we do have some folks setting up. So uh, we'll ask that the cameras just stay on while we get prepared. Uh, Ms. Henry, are you going to be doing a presentation? 
presentation? Okay. So, yes, a video. Yes. Um, so if anybody else in the audience wants to sign in in support of or to give oral testimony, please do so because there are a lot of you here. Sign up. If you don't want to speak but just want to support the efforts, come in and check marks. Just put your name. And if you want to support it, say support. If you're in opposition, put opposition. If you don't have to speak, but it, uh, we would like to at least get the names who, were, who are here this morning so that we can append them to the committee report. Ladies and gentlemen, while the um, folks are uh, signing in right now, uh, I'd like to go ahead for the record, uh, work with the uh, legislative findings and intent uh, to this bill and the reason why uh, the committee felt that uh, Bill 398-33 COR was important. And um, it does state, and it uh, has been the committee, uh, on tourism has been working closely with the Horao Academy and it states that uh, the number of Chamorro speakers uh, here on our uh, island of Guam continue to decline and is under immediate threat of extinction. The average number of proficient Chamorro speakers is at an average age of 55 years and older. Uh, furthermore, the average life expectancy of Guam's Chamorro people is at the age of 65 and 70 years. It is conceivable that the language will be extinct in the year 2025. 20, uh, um, the legislature felt, in uh, our committee felt, that in, the, that in the efforts of preserving and protecting who we are as island people and uh, Chamorros, that um, the efforts must be made to preserve and protect the Chamorro language by encouraging uh, what better way than to encourage our own young children to use uh, the Chamorro language in, uh, our, in their daily lives. Uh, language immersion me methodologies have been proven to be successful for language restoration in a number of communities around the world. And one specific model of that, and I'm sure that uh, President Amory Arceo will speak about it, is the Apunana Leo Preschool in Hawaii, which surrounds preschool age children in an environment conducive to learning their native language. And um, the legislature also finds, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and to the listening audience, that uh, there was um, in in depth. Uh, research and, and collaboration uh, with uh, the experts uh, from uh, the mainland and from the island of uh, Hawaii, the state of Hawaii, in, in literally um, true preservation collaboration for our native uh, languages and our identity. And because of that, uh, this committee felt that uh, with the team of experts out there who have the passion and the heart for advoca advocating that preservation, uh, this bill was born. And at this time, I do know that there is a panel here. And if I can ask Mr. Cepeda, please, to just share with me the listing. Uh, here to speak, uh, we do have Sina, uh, Mr. Bill Polino. We have Ms. Anne-Marie Arceo. Uh, Mr. Roland Kiragua, uh, Ms. Evelyn Tapashnia as a parent, Jimmy Terria as a parent. I know he's with the Department of Education Chamorro Program, but he is coming here today as a parent. We have uh, also from the Chamorro Studies with the Department of Education is Mrs. Rofina Minjola, uh, uh, who's coming here for support, and uh, uh, Angela, is that? Cruz. Angelina? Cruz. 
and then as a parent is important, and Terrence Diego. Uh, if there are any other uh, uh, members in the audience uh, who would like to sign up, please don't hesitate to do so. I have Alan Cepeda here from our committee. Uh, to my right, uh, staff committee member, please sign in. Okay? Um, you know what? Uh, sign up, Paulino, por favor. I will yield to the table. I do know that uh, we have been collaborating, so I'll leave it to you, uh, Saina, uh, Amber, and Sam, and then for the full presentation. Okay? Consigui, por favor. My name is Sidosinadora. I like. Okay. Um, Finana Malago Zubinayo, Donkluna, Sidus Masi. Para and I want to put on a Lulu, Kasi Kinsi on your study, who lee as in a scholar, the Hutumuna, as he in a seat at the Toki, Paratana Lala Ilanguahi, the Mega Onus de Mongago to Azuru, Paraesti, the Chessy Onus, Gitam Punzos, Essigi Paguna, Paraona hit, Paraona possibly, that when he had two, no plan of Parahita. Naguasia necessita para uregla, antes di hana possibly a si para hutum taguni. Posi dos masi da malago zoloqui by nari hao bendi shon, senadora sa gofa penitizo na, you know, para undingo ham guni, para unsebi ham. Lo tungo gi kurasonmo, na estina semita. I pon pon ludi, i tau tau ta zeni famagwanta, mas bonito, mas gatbu, ta mas bali na ilensha, ni sinya on pon ludi i tau tau ta. Hongi ano ki kurason mo, sempre yun li za bain preba guni, wau za nesti tori magai guni ni sumo popoti i lenguahi, na ben primeti hao na ben na posibli za ben konsigiesti, za tali mo na i guni fin na parao posibli. Because in our bay, I have no regard to put in a game on a pro on not having a sin up put in a dot. No, no, but then take a sti. It's very by who to do. You know, I don't see Henry lost our sale. Esther cannot trend the onions. Do you talk to be a sti pin and see any culture than your language? Kululonya ilenguahi na banda. Mega yuli gifna po si na tampu sa man mata na na manenata ni hagas ma tuda si na na hinano ipo di lenguahi po manalala. Zapo siya na mangai hanguni pagu yun masa. No sanya si jo si bill mas sanya guni niya fanagui ham. Tolu Taiwan mama nak kui ni i i lenguahi, za milagro pagi na dia, gop milagro, za hagi senanga esin na momentu, na para tatanu misi mida de tanam medgood, hagi satu tu bi mega itu tu mana hunkan, lo esta kalan hananaie anu si dua za fenunu ni kadenya na hunkan para uhudun esin tu pona lada. Malagos o para intingo na the dispensa na you know managui toro dui isenador dan senador siya sa kofin po twenty years isa huwag ngungu kuna para fangagi kuni sa dispensa twenty sinya halo kui ba ngungu kusi dui sa malik esin na senyor na managui at sa kap managui sa twenty mangu kui sa manhongi gihurao na tinesisario fangagi kuni sa legnya na hunggan sa priesta na pasa. Pas pergi kaki yang nolo, abe polu kita naik zoos. Bila tu mau hamil na, men hami macam tu. No, mega madi bili kita tau tau tak? Mega onus, lo pagi na ora, jauh be hu sange na men hami macam tu. Dan i in studio tomorrow kita ui, gov money dan dan bunitu, 
Nasi nanti esti i i dinanya mami para berhana mohon. Jadi sampai ini kita nasi ku na hunger magahit para berdanya para idong kuluna lecok tu. Jadi amana adu lah. The Chief Rao Academy has been in existence for over 10 years, 13 years now, founded in 2005. The school with the intent to model Aha Pananaleo, a prominent accredited indigenous language preschool immersion program in Hawaii. However, with the lack of resources at the time, a more feasible and economical structure of an immersion summer camp program was established. With an enrollment of almost 200 students for the first summer, a request by popular demand pushed the implementation of an after-school program which followed that same year. Since then, the programs have been sustainable and productive. Below are some of the successes of Chief Crow Academy through the years. So we had, we've had our Temple and Somnac program, 13 rounds of that, uh, graduating uh, three, almost 3,000 immersed students starting two th since 2005. We've implemented an after-school program, our Temple in Minaguf, for 13 years now, uh, with 500 immersed students, approximately 500 immersed students. And in 2008, we started our Mantieni Familia classes, which included the families learning and, and our um, family in our family immersion program with 300 immersed families. Since 2010, in our so we have classes in our in our adult community classes and our corporate classes. We've had over 200 immersed students. Another one of our accomplishments is that we garnered a, a $900,000 grant from a &E to create um, that which uh, Mr. Bill Paulino directed um, under the Esther Martinez Initiative with 10, 10 training manuals. And an immersion curriculum module we produced it to train 15 immersion educators. And I just brought it just so you see that we have our, our, we have our stuff together. Okay. We're just waiting to implement it, you know, aside from our after school program and our summer program. So I guess this is it, if given the opportunity. However, with, in all the programs, we believe that our family immersion program is the most successful in producing fluent speakers. And it is through this and, and secondly, our we have classes that um, uh, we are able to prove that immersion works. Uh, uh, we'll show that in a testimony in a video in a little bit. We need a high level of parent support in order to sustain the school. It's crucial for the immersion program to thrive. Therefore, because it allows opportunity for parents and family members to practice using the language in everyday communication within a home, uh, parents and family members, it, it creates opportunities for them to provide input with their children and to practice with them every day in a common indigenous setting uh, that, that uh, drives self-identity. Successful language re revitalization, and I like to say uh, this is a point because we've been doing this for 13 years, so if anybody is wondering, uh, this is taken from the Ahapunanaleo uh, website, 2016. Uh, under DOE, and I quote, successful language revitalization involves a long, multi-stage and multi-pronged process, addressing not only programmatic, curricular, and pedagogical issues, but also policy and infrastructure development. The Hawaiian language revitalization, revitalization movement and specific efforts within the Hawaii Department of Education is a good example to follow, for us to follow. And so they've been at it since 2003. And since 2003, they are now, um, the Punanaleo has 13 schools, 13 preschools all throughout Hawaii. Most linguists and educators would agree that total immersion programs are the best option for revitalizing a language. They are built on a common sense premise that the way to learn a language is to create an environment in which the language and only that language is constantly used. And so with that, um, Senator, Senadora, um, I'd like to say that just to give you an idea of the appropriations and how we're going to use it in this in this manner. Now that we've, you know, been it's no longer going to be a pilot because we've proven it already. So the immersion programs within Rao is not a pilot anymore. It's proven. We've produced successful families, and you'll hear in the testimonies today um, uh, some of this evidence. 
but here's what we plan to do for the first year of the, with these monies. Uh, and 150k is, I know it's big and we appreciate it, but it's seed money to get us started. We need more to keep us going to sustain us. So in year one, our focus is going to be on curriculum refining and development for the two to four year olds in the preschool, because right now this is based for um, general language immersion educators to train their 10 training modules. It's ready to go to train uh, immersion educators, and then we have uh, three sets of, of lesson plans, uh, all in uh, three different areas in the school, at home, and in the community. And so here's our plan. Phase one, which would be month one to three, should we get the funding immediately? From January to March, we plan to recruit experienced and trained immersion educators to refine current curriculum and assessments to fit preschool standards. Um, so we need to you know, move into refining that. So that's, we, we, we think we can do it in three months. Phase two, uh, during months two and three, overlapping February and March, to recruit faculty and staff on implementation of immersion curriculum and assessment. Phase three, months four to nine, which is April to September, train faculty and staff on implementation and practicum of immersion curriculum and assessments. And phase four, months 10 to 12, which is October to December, Fa the faculty to de uh, will develop preschool visuals and learning aids that coincide with immersion curriculum and assessments. So to, co to, to coincide with the, the uh, quote that I said earlier, that successful language revitalization involves long, multi-stage and multi-pronged process, uh, multi -pronged process, this is what I meant by um, taking our time to make sure we develop it right so that in the future, we look forward to developing more base sites in small communities instead of taking many, many students. And then finally, uh, phase five, month 12, to print all visual and learning aids. And uh, between months one to 12 this whole year, we will be finding the, su the most suitable facility for our preschool. And we have many options on our list right now. Um, St. Francis is offered a classroom. Out of St. Francis, we've done it before. Uh, we've held a pilot. That was a pilot preschool program that was 100% successful as far as fluency. However, the grant right now, we did that under the a grant. Um, the, uh, uh, we have a realtor also looking around here in Azania for a, a place right now. As we, uh, he's been looking for the last couple of months to see uh, you know, what we can find. So through this year, we will use this funding to refine and develop and really get down pack our curriculum and training of emerg the emerging educators and the staff so that we ensure success. Um, and then we go into year two. Now this funding will be used all for year one and then year two, uh, hopefully by then our, our board, we have a very aggress an aggressive board right now. Um, uh, I have all the confidence in them that we will find a way to continue to fund for sustainability our year two. Uh, um, activities and that's where we'll purchase all the equipment and, and that's going to happen in year two and then start to implement the daycare recruit and, and start so although originally I thought that we I'm, in my excitement and my passion I wanted to start in August of 2017 I have a business person on my board that just you know put me in my place and said wait a minute we got to do this right we got to take our time and do it right and uh, I have all the faith in him and his success in his businesses and so Therefore, this is what I propose we will do with the 150K, is to solidify our curriculum, train the emergent educators to ensure that we have um, um, proficient emergent educators. And so, lastly, uh, we pray and God willing, uh, we open the preschool in June of 2018, after all the planning and implementation and training, June 2018. Um, as my uh, um, uh, final testimony in, in, uh, for this bill, I'd like to present the evidence that, um, and, and allow this video that I want to show to, to speak for itself of our, all, our work, all our hard work for the past 13 years of immersion, uh, this immersion education.
as they're setting that up, uh, Ms. Arceo, Ms. Arceo, we can have a copy of the testimony that you have so we can make copies and append it to the journal. Okay. Thank you. Senator, I leave you and our people with that as uh, just small evidence of some of the work I thought that would be the best way to prove, aside from the pictures and the people you see here today and the parents, to prove uh, our work for the last 13 years. Um, Samoro do gi kura sonu jani zoku aga lo most appling gi zoku commento sonu kumbrendia lo appling lo beitagi a kada dia beitagi beitagi po quintus ki fino samoro so um, dispenso that uh, I speak in English uh, so that uh, as as oversight chair of tourism when um, I have to share with the listening audience when um, I was asked about this program and how we can move to implement it forward. 
I had to share how embarrassed I was when I was at that meeting uh, because we had families like, uh, I, I want to say, uh, the uh, Bora, Pika's parents, and, and the, their attempt to learn the language with their children. And I was sitting in the audience at the meeting at the Ladder of Freedom uh, Hall, and I couldn't speak when I saw this video. And in the audience was also my brother. And though we both understand the language because my grandmother uh, spoke a uh, little English or broken English, uh, that's where I, I would say that we at least got the understanding of how to uh, uh, at least understand what she wanted and what she wanted us to do. But when I saw the Farron family there committing and working, I said to myself, it is ins I'm, I'm embarrassed that I didn't take the initiative for myself to teach my children. And my husband, who's um, also native of Guam, his father's American Indian, his mother's Chamo, the mother spoke the language to her personally uh, every day. Um, he would speak the language to my mother, my father, my uncles, my aunties. But when he looked at me, he spoke in English. And when I asked him, why is it that every time, even to my youngest son, Jathan, that when you see him, you speak Chamorro, but when you look at me, you speak English. And he said, I is it's because you cannot answer me back in Chamorro. And when I was sitting there at that meeting, at that conference, listening to why it was important to get resources from the Tourist Attraction Fund because it was a part of Guam's enabling legislation to support Chamorro activities, to preserve and to advocate and to perpetuate the Chamorro language and the Chamorro identity. I said, what better way than to start with myself? Because though it was a different mindset back in the 60s and 70s that in order for us to have a better education, we, we didn't have to speak our language. We had to speak English because we would have better job opportunities because we could speak the English language better. That was the mindset. Had I, had I known what I know today based on preserving our language, I would have said, it is not fair that we learn somebody else's language without having to learn our own. And ladies and gentlemen, this is my commitment back to the people to say, I'm here to start. And uh, I had to, I, I felt compelled to say that now. I do know that others of you wanted to, want to present testimony, but I had to share with you, um, Senora and Anne Marie, that it was important that I take the time to say thank you to all the hard work, to the parents that are here, to the members that are here, to the volunteers that are here. The two bills this morning is because the commitment from this legislature is to make sure that we don't lose that language. And if there is a programs out there that we can help to, to and step up to the plate, then we have to at least give the little resources that we have. We at least need to share that. And that's why these bills are created today. So, um, Thank you very much for that. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you for the Johnny Sablon music. It truly brings back a lot of memories. But to to call and to all the other children that are there, thank you for never quitting up, quitting on on teaching the language because because I wish I can do. I, I wish I can speak it as fluently as that young, beautiful seven years old, Miss Kitaguan. To the parents, thank you. So, um, Mr. Polino, I will go ahead and yield the floor to you. Senator to Itina Munya Barnes, that was a very moving testimonial that you have done. Um, for the records, Guahu Sibyo Paulino Toto in a Lahan to the dispenser to Sa Anaya Organo, Anne Marie, 
Malongo, Magat Kiniki, Halatsa, the no Taja Timpokuni, Parabai Tugi, the Pussy Half Malago, Parabai Tugi, Guinea Testimonium, Lomak Mato, Giga and Guenogi Uranlas, Dos, Gi Satangma, Kasi, and Ona Ona, Fanmakta, I mean Namakumaulo, Kadadia. Whereas Magana, who was Sujis, the Half a Dipsi Parabai Sangan, the Hungan, Kialum Kurason, no Matuo, Finelina, Parabai Supportis in a Bio, the Hungi Nagin, Ikurason Muloque, Nahumujum, Estis and Gentai, Ikurason Mu, Tiopusi Bliss in a Nabio, Neparahujum, Jogagagona, Todu Duloque, Itoto, Lehas Latura, Sinidora, and Sinidora Sia, who must support this in a Bio. If in any other need to participate by song and Zangenta Atan, I name my implementers, the name Munajan, I grant no Manoi Hura Academy, which is all you see, but the process in a grant, Gua has a lope, Gua Fundoniani, Paraonian Afatotos in a program. Whereas Magana, Hungan, Masia Gom, no Ajima Fanan, no master teacher with a tempo, the Gogumia, the Pursi, Paraman Matugi, told you to see Sia Leplu, told you to eat the Pursi of the Manu, Paramafana Gwenya, Hafana Maniera, the Pamafuni, Paramafana Gwenya, Ilinguai, in those pedagogical practices and strategies. Hungan in Sili, Jain implementers, the school in St. Francisco, the Zonia. The Matu Tina Magar as each is each is on you, see quattro on you, see Kifinin and a Paguin implementers. The Untuafa, Idipasi, Itilinguaya, Humutum, Law Adjusian Cassin, he Nengi, Nihuli, Prefecto Ginin, if a Magoon, if in any name by not young, Ne Dipasi, Humutum Ginin, if a Magoon. In Nadania, Estina Kassin programa jang i kausa untungwa na eskulan really honesty. Pwes dumanda niya, ano, pwes na danya jang yaji mafananan Corporal Works of Mercy. Guahan na famaguon man matugi eskwela jang magogote on latan spam. On pargunas ti jali niya, Mr. Bill kausi niya on na ay kamalin karida ni esti latan spam. Kena podo, ada hua kesina kesian kuantus gini di padung di final semua. Jadi energi di posisi ajaran gini tak perlu tehis di nak kelas ini nengi kesin nak lingguahi yang naik situas jadi hati populer tehis di. By now you in the story, dia tempoh di Japanese, you know when the island was actually occupied. And the one of the places in Iran, in Iran, which was used actually as a concentration camp, which is called Pajestis. And I know not too many people knew about this story, but my family, whom I come from, 19 altogether, and 15 other families with probably not less than 10 children of each of those family members, one Evening, late evening, they were all awakened. Somehow, when they were, you know, when they all woke up in the middle of the night, they were made to line up in Pajestas. This was just out of that cave where the only shelter that they had was that big cave in Pajestas. They were all made to line up, and they were told not to say anything. They were given instruction not to talk to each other. However, my mother could not even keep that silence. She had to stand up, and what did she use? She used a language that came from her heart, that came as a mother tongue, a tongue other than, I mean, no other language did she use, but something that came from the heart. And she took out the rosary and started saying the rosary in tomorrow. One of the soldiers, there were about five of them with guns, and one of them stood up and he said, you are not going to say anything. My mother turned around and looked at them and she continued to say the rosary in tomorrow. And before everybody knew what was going on, everybody was responding in that language. Right after the rosary, the Abena was, was sung also in tomorrow. 
one of the things that they that my parents noticed and the others noticed there were five of them with guns only one left behind all four left and so uh, the rosary and the singing was done in tomorrow then this soldier gave them um, you know an instruction that, that they need to start running but somehow people were afraid to run at that time you know during uh, that instruction they uh, the second time the soldier was very angry and he said you had better start going you, to save your life you had better start going start moving so everybody started running and within a few minutes guess what my oldest brother had to turn around because everybody heard a gunshot this Japanese guy committed suicide. He killed himself. And what is it that we learn from something like this? Something that was coming from the heart. And the value also that came from this that my parents had to explain to us, and I maintain, by the way, a diary. Of, you know, since I was a little boy, I started writing. And I started writing in tomorrow as well as in English. And so I wrote these things, and one of the things that my parents emphasized is the love for your fellow human being. That one in itself I will never forget, and the depth of it, I can never, never understate that, that even till now my relationship with people can never, you know, go below that. I need to look. One of the things that was emphasized was to look at the highest goodness of a person. And that was a that's a relationship that I can still I, I still carry throughout my life and it's something that I inculcated also with my children. One thing also that at St. Francis School, as we, you know, the parents started asking that we implement this also the second year of implementation at St. Francis School, is to implement the program with the higher elementary, which is from fifth grade all the way down to pre-K. There was this troubled child who had to go every Wednesday to our department of, I mean, uh, you know, a department of, uh, not corrections, but the, uh, no, the, uh, the youth, uh, yes. And so uh, he walked, I was in the student store, and I was standing there, and he took out, a two, I mean, two dollars. He went over to the refrigerator, and he took out a drink. And he walked out, I mean, started walking to the door, and then suddenly he made a stop. He turned around, and he returned the drink, and he said to me, Senor Bill, Tuli and eight spaces, Janai e Kamalin Karidat, Saguaha Tauta Mas no Mississita. And you see, again, because of those values that were taught, because if it's just the language that is to be taught, those values and beliefs that must go together. That is the reason why language and culture cannot be separated. It cannot divorce it, you know, divorce each other. Because once you start doing that, then language is going to be superficial type of learning. Therefore, that culture has to be emphasized in whatever teaching aspect that it's done. And it, you know, in the things that we have written in, this, in these documents, the lesson planning as well as in the pedagogical practices and those examples that we have given, those beliefs and values are so much embedded in these, uh, the writings that we put together. By the way, it was all, uh, edited by the late uh, Bennett Dunga, uh, God bless her soul, but I'll tell you, it was something that she worked even when she was in, um, in the Philippines, because I met her there, I was there, I had a, suffered a heart attack, and, and so I met her there. And she took these books and started editing them. And one of the things that Bennett said was, you know, I don't think I have much, uh, you know, life to live, you know, here on earth. But all of you, you need to make sure and push the legislative body to make sure that things are done 
to or not only to preserve but to ensure the continuity of you know the language and the culture of the tomorrow people people and so you know I left the school quite a bit in a hurry this morning I wasn't at work yesterday but here is the Nubila Ninu and guess what the entire school got together this morning to pray the Nubila Ninu in tomorrow and you know what we're going to be having a culminating activity where what is it that we do after something like this in our culture is to come and share that fellowship you know this go go type of practice that we have done over the years with the St. Francis School, we also notice in the implementation of this program that bullying is so minimal that we hardly talk about bullying because of the belief of inagwaja, inagofli, that, you know, we are God's creatures and therefore whatever it is that is inculcated in this culture it's got to be perpetuated and so there's hardly you know a time where we have to talk about rules and regulations in terms of bullying it's very minimal maybe two or three you know during the year and that's it and i testify this because i know this as a school principal for st francis school uh, one particular person in our school who never spoke a bit of tomorrow guess what he is quite fluent and one of the things that he testified you know in front of the student assembly and he said something has got to be done with this program we need funding to ensure that you know this is constantly perpetuated so i realize that there's hundred and fifty thousand dollars that probably may go through and appropriate it but i also venture to say and recommend with your committee push for another hundred and fifty thousand dollars you know i i came up here because i couldn't help but talk to, i mean testify for this the, the mr mariaga right Maranaga. Maranaga. Yeah, and you know what? That really caught my attention. Because you, you, know, you look at the island of Guam, and what is it that we can give the tourists? You know, the families that we have made friends from Japan and from Korea, one of the things that they have talked about is the culture, the language that they hear. They want to see more of these and more activities as they come out to this island. And so I, I know I've put together, uh, you know, and it can be read, but these are my testimonials, and thank you for allowing us, uh, allowing me to be here today. Thank you, Mr. President. 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 Really important that 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 get out and um, testimonies like that remind us of what we need to do uh, as the people coming together to protect uh, what was God given to us. So thank you, Susu Um Ladies and gentlemen, I know this is out of the ordinary, but I've been up here, and if I can just take a nature break, I'll be right back. Just thirty seconds. 